Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a tool tip <clears throat> that is an interesting one and it includes some family history. The oldest tool I had in my collection from my family was a screwdriver that I had gotten from my dad. It looked just like this one. Um, sadly, early on in the production of my show Savage Builds for the Discovery Channel, which we filmed in the uh, sp uh, spring of 2019, uh, we had a robbery. We lost most of our tools in one morning. And I lost a lot of personal tools. You know, tools are replaceable, but I did lose a couple of things I was sad about. And I lost that screwdriver that my father had. That It's not that my dad gave it to me. It's just that like it, it matriculated to me eventually. And <clears throat> when one travels and goes to like different theaters or different companies with your tools, you often spray paint your tools a specific color. Uh, so like your tools will all have a pink line on them or blue or yellow. Uh, and I had a blue uh, line. And so that that specific screwdriver had a like a pattern of blue on it. And it it just, as an object, it reminded me not only of my whole history of making, but the history that preceded me, right? My dad and my grandfather, both of them were makers. Um, so I endeavored to go find that screwdriver again and discovered that I had a point of view I did not realize about the screwdriver. Now, one of the things that I love pointing out to people is that like what a lot of hardware companies say you should have as tools is like a fair bit of it is bullshit. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> nobody needs a 14... What's... I was gonna say, nobody needs all 14 of those screwdrivers that came along with your socket set. At the same time, I'm looking at something around a dozen screwdrivers, so how come? <clears throat> the answer is you really only need like three sizes of flatheads, three sizes of Phillips, and then you should have a, a, a wide array of miniature screwdrivers, like watchmaker screwdrivers, the Weehaws that I use uh, for electronics work. Um, and I didn't think that I had a point of view about the screwdriver. Hold on just a second. I mean, there are a million different form factors for the handle. Here is a, uh, here is a cobalt that is specifically insulated. So if you use it around hot electrics, it's not going to arc to you and electrocute you. Here's an old Stanley rubber one. Here's what I think almost most screwdrivers in the world look like, this uh, hexagonal handle. Uh, here's a bigger hexagonal handle by Husky. Uh, this is a great pry bar. Um, so what is different about these? Well, first of all, I'd like to just express, these are Stanley Workmaster screwdrivers. They're hard to find. At any given point on eBay, there may be only three or four. Uh, and I've been buying them for the last few months when I can find them because I'm trying to build a complete set, which is a, one of the re which is a, one of the reasons that you see so many doubles here. Like that's a nice big fatty. These three are this actually are these four the same size? Yeah, because I buy them in lots with others. Sometimes I buy two at a time or three at a time. These two Phillips are the same. That's a smaller flathead, that's an even smaller flathead. So I'm doing really good in the flathead department. No, that doesn't. I'm doing good in the flathead department. I need work in the, in the Phillips department. So I, I'm assembling, for me, what I consider the best screwdriver set. Now, I'll eventually take these extras and I'd trade them away or probably give them to people who, who need screwdrivers. But these came out in the 70s, this Workmaster series, and it has what I think is the most objectively beautiful handle of any hand tool that I can think of, and frankly, the best feeling handle. I feel so much more gription from the long taper and three large detents on these screwdrivers than I do on something like this. I can't get a handle on something like that. That's just, that doesn't feel good to my hand where this feels like amazing. Um, I was nervous about doing this tool tip because I expect that many of you watching are gonna be like, I wanna get some Workmaster screwdrivers and you're gonna go on eBay and you're going to compete with me for things that I want. <sighs> but that's the cost of being open about your information and your proclivities. Um, it turns out, after years of having drawers full of screwdrivers and never really caring about which one I grabbed, it was losing that screwdriver from my dad that made me, and replacing it, that made me realize there was a truly awesome screwdriver set to be had. And when I finally achieve, 
a complete set of flatheads and Phillips, well, I'll give away all my seconds and my extras. Uh, and I'll probably give them a pride of place somewhere in the shop, uh, somewhere you can readily grab them instead of putting them in a drawer. Because I also love looking at them. I mean, so they made two different Workmaster handles. Uh, the, yellow, the clear yellow ones, I think, are of a slightly lower quality. Um, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what resins these are made of. You'll have to go to AVE for that sort of coverage of tools. Um, but, uh, and, and these are even harder to find. Um, but yeah, these are without a doubt to me, the most functionally beautiful hand tools in my collection. And I can't wait till I have a complete set. Yeah, I know. It's not a complete tool tip. It's more like a tool tip in progress while I am assembling the, tool, the tools of my dreams. But there you have it. Now you can have the same dreams and compete with me for these eBay auctions. And I warn you, some of these can cost like 20 bucks a piece. This is why I've been slowly gathering them. Although now I suspect that price may go up a little. Thanks everyone for watching this tool tip. I'm Adam Savage in my cave and I will see you next time. I almost forgot. There were two others that were sitting here and they're both the same model number, 66-801, but they are very different. Um, these are, <laughs> these are uh, all-in-ones, which means they're a screwdriver handle, an aluminum, an anodized aluminum shaft that you put uh, bits into so they can be anything that you want. And that seems great, except for in the later models of these, they had a pop cap that as you saw, doesn't hold the bits in here very well. And I find that super annoying. Yeah, that's no good. So that's a bullshit piece. This is a much better piece that's actually, Wow, I just got that on eBay. Those are all super rusted because this one screws in. Um, and this will, ooh, this whole thing smells really bad. I'm gonna have to soak that one. Uh, at any rate, <laughs> this is like the, uh, the, the versatile Rosetta Stone of the Stanley Workmaster series. It is the one in which you can put any bit you want in it, but make sure you get the screw end, not the dumb pop top end. One of the things I love about this channel is that we don't make how-to videos so much as we make what happened videos. And what almost always happens are mistakes and screw-ups. In fact, they're completely integral to making and honestly to being a person. And to celebrate this, Tested has a new batch of demerit badges for the screw-ups you will encounter in the shop. From left to right, we have touching your paint job, assembling things backwards, losing a tiny screw or part, gluing your fingers together, and smashing your thumb. And frankly, if you haven't done both of these, even if you're not a maker, I just don't feel like you've experienced enough of the world. I'm not saying get out a hammer and smash your thumb, but I will tell you that the blacker your fingernail after the injury, the less it's gonna hurt in the long run. I almost forgot, these make excellent additions to your shop apron, and they are available at tested-store.com.